Welcome back. So in the last lecture, we set up the CSRF protection, which is a very important piece of our application. But now I really want to create a new user. So let's get started with that. I'm in a project where I left the last time and I will handle all the user authentication. So sign up and log in with another package called Passport. Passport. So I will install this here also with the save flag Passport. And I will need two other packages. I also need a package to encrypt my password. So I will use also with the save flag bcrypt node.js for that. And I also want to add a package to have flash messages enabled in my application, which are basically messages stored in the session, which are then or can be shown in the view and thereafter they are deleted from the session. So like if you were watching my lateral videos, you know it from the validation errors, which are displayed in the view if we got any and well, otherwise they aren't. So this possibility to attach messages to the request to render them in the view. The package I'll use for this is the connect flash package. And with that, I got quite a lot of packages installed. I'll go to my app.js file and work with these packages. For example, password, I'll require this here. This again is the package used for the user management, user authentication, login, sign, sign up and so on. And also the flash package from connect flash. And then in the middleware initialization process here, after initializing the session here, and the ordering does matter, I'll initialize flash, which needs the session to be initialized first since it uses sessions, so that's important. And thereafter, I will initialize password with the initialize method. And I will also set it to use sessions to store the user. So the, for this reason, this also has to be after this session initialization. And with that, I'm good to go and use Passport with these flash messages. However, this really is only the first step because Passport doesn't ship with all the functionality we need here out of the box box because it doesn't know uh, which fields our user has, email and password, or username and password, or whatever. So we have to implement a strategy for Passport to use. Now there are packages with predefined package, uh, predefined strategies, where we then only have to adjust certain parameters or define how the user should be created, but the general strategy has been laid out. So I will use the local strategy in this application, which basically means locally on this server, that's where the name comes from, store the user. So create it with email, password, whatever you like, but store it on this server. Other strategies could be Facebook. So use Facebook login or anything like that. There are tons of strategies available. And if you want to learn more about them, simply Google for passport strategies strategies and here in the documentation of password you may go to strategies over here and there you see a bunch of strategies you may choose so you, as you can see there are a lot however i'm going with the local strategy as explained earlier so back in my project i will install it by running npm install save flag passport local and this allows me to configure this strategy to my needs to configure this i will create a new folder in my project which i will name config and in this config folder i will create a passport.js file and this is the file where i want to set up my passport and the strategy i use for this i will first import passport here too and now here's an important thing to understand if I require passport here in this file and I priorly set it up in this app.js file here, 
of course, currently I'm not requiring this config file anywhere, but this will follow. But if I import passport in two different files, the configuration I apply in one file, for example, here in this app.js file where I initialize it and so on, will be available in the other file. So I'm not setting up two different instances or anything like this. I'm working with the same one. That is important to understand in Passport's case here. So back in the config file, I'm importing Passport. I also want to import my user model. So I will require this. Models user. And then I want to import this strategy, this local strategy. So I will require this passport local. And then here the strategy object. Okay, so this is the setup or the imports I need. And with this, I can configure passport. Now, the first configuration I want to use here is the serialize user function here, which will basically tell Passport how to store the user in the session. So this takes a function with the user as an input and then the done callback, which Passport will execute once it well is done. And in here I will use, I will simply return done null and then user ID, which basically means whenever you want to store the user in your session, serialize it by ID. So you use the ID of the user, which of course can be retrieved. I also need to define the opposite, that I want to deserialize the user. I'm missing an I here. Here I'll also pass a function as an argument with the ID of the user, which I know is the argument or the um, user property by which I'm serializing the user. And then I can say user, using the user model, find by ID. So in the Mongo database here using Mongoose, then pass the ID, which is stored in a session. And then I have my normal callback where I either get an error or I find the user and I want to return both things here in the done function. So the first argument when returning done is of course always the error case. Therefore, I'm setting this to null here when I'm ser serializing the user. And here I'm either returning the error in case I got one or well, the user if this was done successfully. So this allows Passport to store my user in the session or store the ID in the session and retrieve the user whenever I need it through this stored ID. So that's a key part, but we're not really creating users yet, right? So let's do that. For this, I will create a new strategy and I will, or a new middleware for this. I will do this using the use method on Passport and then I will name this local sign up. So this will be my sign up strategy, which I use when I want to create a new user. I will create a new local strategy for that. And this local strategy here, this constructor takes two arguments. The first one is some configuration in the form of a JavaScript object. And the second one will be a callback. So the configuration first. I want to tell this local passport package that my username field, and these, these are of course keys this package expect, is, expects to get, so by which I configure this package, so that my username field is email in my case. This could of course be username if you were using that, but I'm using email. And my password field is password. I also want to pass the request to the callback. So pass request to callback true, which means that in my callback here, I first get the request so that I can use it there too. I also get the email and password entered and then this done function again, which I can use in the end to tell password, hey, I'm done, everything's working, hopefully. So. In here, I can then use my user model to find the user or to 
basically with that I'm checking if the user already exists and I try to find the user by email by the email field which should be equal to this email provided and then here I'll have a callback with either an error, error or the found user. Now if I got an error then I want to return done with that error so I'm not successful. If I don't get an error but I find a user well then I'm successful with this query with this database query but it's not a good case because then I'm trying to create a user which already exists or at least with an email address which already exists. So in this case I will also return done with no error since nothing went wrong here but of course also not with um, any retrieved object but instead with as a third argument a message where I say email is already in use. This will later be this flash message stored in the session which I can output in the view. So here I'm by, by setting this to false here I'm not telling Passport that this was successful. I'm telling it though that no error appeared but it's also not successful. Instead here is the reason why it was not successful this message. So if we passed both checks, so we didn't get an error and the user does not exist yet, then I can create a new user by using my mongoose model and I will set the email address of this user to email and the password to, now here's the interesting question, to password. I could do this, but that would not be encrypted. Certainly not what I want. So this is where I come back to the part I was talking in an earlier video about. In my user model, I want to create some helper methods to allow me to easily encrypt the password. For this, I will first import bcrypt, which is the package I installed a couple of minutes ago, which allows me to easily hash my password. And then I add some methods to my user schema using the methods object here. And then I simply come up with some names. So I will name my first one encrypt password and this will be a function where I expect to get a password and inside of this function I will simply return the hashed password using bcrypt then the synchronous hashing here and I will pass the password into this generate the salt for this um, hash so generate this synchronous too and I will use five rounds of salt creation here and null as the last argument. And with that, I'm creating an encrypted password and I'm returning this so I can use this encrypt password method to get an encrypted password. And I will also set up another method here. So also add this to methods named valid password where I will also pass in a password. And this is of course the method with which I want to be able to check if a password matches the hashed password. So for this I will also use bcrypt since I can't just rehash it and then compare both hashed password because they will differ. That's the idea behind this hashing here. But bcrypt can use the knowledge that, that it knows the algorithm used and so on to check if the two technically different but still same passwords are equal. So then I can use the compare method here, compare synchronously. If this password matches this password and this here of course refers to the password of the current user on which, which we're running this. So this refers to the user on which this valid password method is executed and you will see this later. So with these two helper methods in place, I'll go back to my new user creation and I will replace password here with new user encrypt password password. I can then save this new user and I will provide my callback here. And if I get an error, then I want to return done with that error. But otherwise, I will return done 
null, so no error, and with the new user. So that has been quite a lot of work, but with this, the user is finally created with the strategy I can create the user. Now, the question that remains, of course, is how do I apply the strategy? So in my index.js file in the route here, in the post route where I create this user, I will no longer redirect to my uh, root route, to my uh, slash route. Instead, I will replace this whole function here with passport and then authenticate. And this middleware, which will take over the request, takes the strategy I just defined, local sign up, of course, this one here, and then some configuration or JavaScript object where I can tell password, password that I want to have a redirect in the success case. So if we are signing up successfully, then I want to redirect to let's say slash profile. Otherwise I want if the failure redirect, I want to be redirected back to sign up. And I also want to flash a message here. So failure flash true. And this will flash the message I'm setting up here using this connect flash package I just installed a couple of minutes ago. So with that, that is all set up. But how does password know this strategy? Because I'm setting it up in this password chess file in the config folder and I'm nowhere importing this folder. The simple answer is password doesn't know it. So currently this would not work. Back in the app chess file, I will write after initialize in Mongoose, therefore require this package. So config password. And I don't need to bind it to a variable. I simply want to load it, which will automatically run through this file and give me this configuration, set it up. So execute all these methods here and therefore set up password. Of course, I could copy all that code here and just dump it into my app.js file, but that would quickly blow or bloat this, this file. And I don't want to use that, therefore I'm outsourcing this in this file. So with all that in place, I will restart my server. Oh, and I want to want do one thing before I do this. I want to add the uh, profile route here so that I can actually get redirected to it if I'm successful. So router get profile. And here I simply want to render this profile page and just to see that this works, I'll put user profile on that page. So now if I restart this, I'm getting an error as I can see. Let's see what is this. Passport is not defined. Well, that's certainly sad to hear. Maybe I should do this. So passport require passport and also I'll reorganize my imports to have my own files or my own um, yeah imports here below the, the packages. So with that if I now restart my server this should hopefully work and let me reload uh, go again to the sign up page and I'll try this. The problem of course is that I should redirect to user sign up and user profile here. So restart this again. So I'll, so user sign up, let's try this again. And I get redirected, redirected to user profile, but I can, got a note found uh, error because this route here is false. So if I do this and now I reload, this would work. So as you can see, the sign up, sign up would have worked, just a little routing error here. And you can also verify this by going to your um, Mongo bin folder here and uh, run the Mongo shell client. Then I'm using my shopping database here. And if I find, go to my users collection and show all users, you can see this newly created user I just created a couple of seconds ago. So the user sign up is working. What's not working is if I 
go to my sign up page again, outputting validation errors. So let me quickly add this here. For this, I'll go in my index.js file to the get users sign up route here. And I want to extract possible messages I would could have by using request flash. So possible flash messages stored in my request through this flash package. And then they would be stored under error if they come from passport. So the message I'm flashing here is not stored under message, but instead this is just telling passport that this is a message I want to pass, but it is stored under error. So I can retrieve this like this from this flash package. And then I can also pass this to my view. So messages should be messages here. In my view, I can then simply go here where I have my validation errors placeholder and enter handlebars here. So a little if statement, check if we have messages, but how can I do that? Well, back in the index chess file, I also need to pass another field here. I will name it has errors since in handlebars template, I can only check on single properties. I can't uh, specify equality conditions, for example. So here I will pass has as errors if messages length is greater than zero. Otherwise we don't have any messages, so we have no errors. So if we do have errors, I will go back to my sign up page. I check this by running if it has errors, this newly created um, variable I'm passing to the view. And then inside of this if condition, I'll create using bootstrap a little div here. And inside of this div, I want to loop through all my error messages I might have. Of course, I will only have one here, but I think you get my point. And I simply output it here. So with this, if I restart my server, reload the page here, test, which is a taken email address, you see email is already in use. So that's not happening, that's taken care of. However, we still would be able to create a new user with an invalid email address like this one. And I'll take care of this in the next lecture. See you there, bye.